Podcast. Presented by XFL2K.com. With your host, Tron Hawkins. Welcome to This Is XFL Podcast. I am your host, Tron Hawkins. Um, I know it's been a, about a week and a half since I made an episode, and I apologize. You know, the flu and this cold weather just been kicking my ass lately. <laughs> um, I just now got to where I'm feeling uh, like myself. I've hinted at this episode on Twitter and on Facebook, um, at XFL Podcast, and now it's time. Um, I'm going to talk about the only MVP in the XFL history, Tommy Maddox. Next few episodes, I'm going to talk about Tommy Maddox. I'm going to talk about the big game, the million dollar game, or the big game at the end. I will talk about that uh, one day next week, and then I'm going to talk about History of the Spring League, since it just came out that the XFL is going to partner with them. I may also do a podcast, uh, emergency podcast, on who the TV partner is, uh, because that's going to probably come out in the next week or so. So that's a lot of stuff to look forward to um, over the next few weeks here on This Is the XFL Podcast. Again, I apologize. It took me a while to record. If that ever happens again, though, go back and check out the archives. So I'm going to talk about Tommy Maddox. He's the only MVP in XFL history. I'm going to talk about his football career, kind of briefly, kind of like I did on Johnny Menzel and Tebow. So he's born in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, he graduated from L.D. Bell High School in Hearst, Texas in 1990. Maddox lettered in football, basketball, and baseball. So he's an athlete. Um, he played all three sports. He lettered in them, so, I mean, he had to be good. He was team captain and named the Southwest Texas Offensive Player of the Year, district most valuable player, and the area most valuable player. In college, he went to UCLA and uh, Nani. Maddox completed 182 of 327 passes at 55.7%, with 2,682 yards and 17 touchdowns, 14 picks. Obviously, with that kind of, I mean, he didn't do a whole lot in high school. I mean, college, excuse me. Due to his kind of poor play, you know, kind of average play, they won an average record. They went 5-6-90. and six and 90. The following season, Ma- uh, Maddox led the UCLA to an improved 9-3 and three record and a uh, John Hancock Bowl title. He completed 60.9% of his passes, so he, he improved that 5%. He was 209 for 343, 2,681 yards, 16 touchdowns, 16 interceptions. So, again, he kind of was just kind of eh in college. Uh, so, I mean, he had just as many touchdowns and interceptions pretty much by the end of his career. In his two years with UCLA, Mattis became the first Pac-10 player to pass for 5,000 yards by his sophomore year and won first team all American honors in ninety one. This was um this was different back then. You know, uh, football is more offensive passing wise now than it was in the early nineties. Everybody ran the ball back then. So his numbers might not seem great and they really wasn't to today's standards, but back then, you know, they was probably average to you know, mid range to higher tier. Uh, nobody threw a lot of touchdowns back then in college. That's why a lot of running backs and wide receivers and even kick returners and defensive players were in the Heisman back then. Now it's all quarterbacks. On a Friday night press conference, January 31st, 92, Max announced his intention to declare for the 92 draft, reading from a prepared statement. While I fully understand that another year to UCLA would be enjoyable and beneficial to my development, I feel that my time is now to stand on my feet as a man and take the opportunities offered by the NFL. Max also announced his upcoming marriage and further explained, playing in the NFL has been a dream of mine since childhood. It's a gut feeling that my time is now. In the 92 draft, Denver took him in the first round, 25th overall. And that seems a little early for a guy who was just, again, average at UCLA. But again, that was just how the times were. It's just how it was. Nobody threw the ball a lot back then. Joe Theismann, who was doing the coverage for the draft, commented that Maddox should have stayed at UCLA for another year. His selection by the Broncos did not sit well with John Elway. He was drafted to kind of be the heir to the throne. You know, he's going to take over for Elway. But as we know, Elway didn't retire at the end, you know, the end of the 1990, the 98 season, 99 Super Bowl. So, I mean, he would have to sit there for a while, obviously. Um, it's kind of like with um, with all the quarterbacks behind Brady. There's been a few that everybody thought was going to be the next big thing. Garoppolo seems like the legit next big thing. It's kind of same thing with Brady. People just waiting for Brady to retire, and we don't know if he ever is. His selection did not sit well with Elway since the Broncos had greater needs at several other positions, which Elway felt should have been addressed with their first pick instead of using it on Tommy Maddox. However, Elway understood that Maddox had no control over the Broncos' selection and was always professional in dealing with him, doing what he could to improve and incorporate Maddox into the system. Maddox was expected to see John Elway as quarterback. As a rookie, Maddox subbed under coach Dan Reeves, who also coached the Falcons, which that will come into play later. 
Maddox took his first snaps during the Week 6, October 6 game against the Redskins, completing two of eight passes for 10 yards and one interception in a 34-3 loss. In that game, Maddox became the youngest quarterback to complete a pass since Elmer Ainsman in 1946. Maddox took over the Week 11 game after starting quarterback Johnny Rowe. He left with a shoulder injury, and he led the Broncos to a 27-13 victory. Maddox would start the following four games from Week 12 to Week 15, all losses. His debut in his debut start at week twelve he lost twenty four to nothing to the LA Raiders. Maddox went eighteen to twenty six for two hundred and seven yards and two picks. And was sacked four times and committed three fumbles, including one loss. So kinda of like he was in college, he was turnover prone. Um he was turning over the ball a lot. And he kinda of had that I wanna say gunslinger mentality, but kinda of what it seems like would you know all these gunslingers have equal touchdowns and interceptions. You have some like Mahomes who throws 50 touchdowns and just 10 picks, and you have some like Brett Favre who had a great career, but hell, he threw as many interceptions as he did touchdowns. Same thing with Peyton Manning towards the end. Maddox only learned that he would start uh, three hours before kickoff. So, I mean, that that could have, you know, played some role in it. The Los Angeles Times account of the game reported every time Denver moved the ball, Maddox would be pressured, sacked, or simply dropped the ball. Following the week, a in a 16-13 loss to Seattle, Maddox threw his first touchdown pass professionally connecting with wide receiver Mark Jackson. So we wrote in 93 under Wade Phillips. Maddox played in, played all games in 93 as the place kicker holder. That's all he did. That's what most backup quarterbacks did. You know, Elway wasn't going to sit down for him. Week 14, in a 13-10 loss to San Diego, Maddox completed one pass for one yard. Two line lacquer, Dave Winman, in a fake field goal attempt. That's it. His <laughs> In the second year of the NFL, his only pass completion was on a fake field goal attempt. Elway wasn't going to have none of him. On August 27, 1984, the Rams traded a fourth-round pick for the 95 draft to the Broncos to acquire Maddox. As the salary cap forced Maddox, uh, forced the Broncos to trade him. Init- initially, Maddox was the Rams' third-string quarterback between Chris Miller and Chris Chandler. With the Rams in 94, Maddox played in five games as a place kicker holder and played quarterback in two of those games. And at 8-5 to five loss to the Falcons, Maddox was 7-15, for 15, Completed passes uh, for 86 yards and two interceptions. In week 12, Maddox completed three or four passes for 155 yard drive to set up a field goal. The drive included a career long 39 yard pass to Todd Kitchen. The Rams finished the season 4 and 12 and then moved to St. Louis. This is a guy who got picked in the, in the first round, but the situation was not good. He got picked in the first round, but he was never going to get to play. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, you pick me, why? I mean, I realize that John Elway is John Elway, and I realize, you know, a lot of these guys don't want to let go. But why pick him if you know Elway wasn't going anywhere? Maybe, El- you know, maybe Elway had a point. They should have addressed other, you know, needs instead of picking another quarterback. I mean, he might have been there in the second round, third round, fourth round. We don't know. We'll never know because he got picked 25th. Three days after the St. Louis Rams released him, Maddox signed with the Giants, playing under Coach uh, Reeves again. Maddox served at David Brown's backup and played all six games as a kick holder again. In three games, Maddox replaced Brown as quarterback. Maddox placed injured Brown in the second half of Week 7 against the Eagles. Although Maddox completed his first pass, Maddox um, finished 6 for 23 for 49 yards, three interceptions in one sack. Again, the turnover bug was a big deal to him. And it's crazy that he ended up being <laughs> the XFL MVP because um, his NFL career – really was a bust. He was a bust. I'm sorry, Tommy, if you listen to this, because I did see that you liked my tweet about me doing this episode. I don't mean that in a bad way. But you could probably admit that your NFL career was a bust. But it's not your fault. It's the fact that the Broncos picked you too soon. And to be fair, you may have came out a little bit too early. But you thought the time was now, and I don't blame you. You know, you got to go when you feel that feeling in your gut. You're about to get married. You probably needed the money. I mean... You gotta keep the wife happy. You gotta have a big wedding. So I, I get it. I, I get why you did it. I probably did the same thing. So in '96, in, in the um, 24-17 victory over the Jaguars in the first exhibition game, Maddox played during the second half. Maddox fumbled his first snap from the line of scrimmage, and the Jaguars got a fumble. Maddox repeat the same mistake twice, but w- would lead a game-winning drive. Maddox started the second exhibition game, but they lost 37-27 to the Ravens. Maddox was five for ten, 42 yards, one touchdown, one pick, and two fumbles. The Giants released him um, August 20th, 1996. Again, the turnover bug. You know, I, again, he just had butterfingers. And I, 
it might be lack of experience in college. It might have just been the play system. It might just be the fact that if it was me, I wouldn't want to be the damn place kick place holder for kicks either. So I mean, I get it. I get it. Maddox again joined uh, Dan Reeves with the Falcons, but was released at training camp in '97. In the pre in a preseason 35-31 loss to the Redskins, Maddox completed only four of eleven passes, thirty five yards through a pick on a potential game winning drive. Maddox became an insurance agent with Allstate on November 17, 1997. In the 1999 NFL Films did a feature on Maddox while in Dallas. Maddox continued practicing football regularly with, as a volunteer coach for his alma mater, L.D. Bell High School. As of getting a phone call from the New Jersey Red Dogs and the Arena Football League, Maddox sold his insurance office and joined the team. Maddox completed 284 of 490 yards, 90 passes. Three, for 3,800 yards, 64 touchdowns, and 15 interceptions in a season. This is what he needed. Back, like I said before, back in the NFL, in college days, they just ran the ball and ran the ball and ran the ball and ran the ball, and that's it. That's all he did. Run the ball and throw it every now and then. But due to the Arena Football League, our lovely XFL you know, got the knocking on the door. Maddox would become, become the starting quarterback for uh, the Los Angeles Stream, as everybody knows. Then the first week of the season, despite the team losing its first pick in the XFL draft, Scott Milankovic, Maddox made an impact in his time in the XFL. Again, he wasn't the starter even for his XFL team. Somebody, they had the first pick in the draft, and they picked Scott Milankovic. He got hurt. Here comes Tommy Maddox. And the only thing he does is leave him. Lead him to a damn championship and um next to fell title. So and the MVP. Um he was the only quarterback to start all ten regular season games, led the league in passing yards, touchdowns, and rush uh, and rush for two touchdowns, and led the extreme to the million dollar game, also known as the big game within. The extreme would defeat the San Francisco Demons thirty eight to six, Maddox was named MVP. But then the league voted. You know, I, I wonder if he would have stayed for another season or two in the XFL, you know, if he felt comfortable there. You know, maybe he's listening to this, he can, you know, DM me and answer me. You know, if he would have stayed another year, if they he, they even had talks for him to stay another year. But due to this, um, he got a second chance in the NFL. 2001, uh, Steelers um, signed him as the backup to Cordell Stewart in his first game action week seven. In a 34-7 win over the Titans, Maddox played one 57-yard pass to Troy Edwards. In the, in the final game of the regular season, uh, Maddox played a 6 eight pass for 98 yards and a touchdown pass to Bobby Shaw, an interception, a sack, and 8-yard rush. 2011 Steelers finished 13-3. and three, uh, Sorry, 2001 Steelers finished 13-3 and, and first in the AFC, uh, but they lost to, to the Patriots, and that was the Patriots team that started this dynasty that we have now. Thank you, Steelers. Turn two, uh, week four, Maddox plays Cordell Stewart and let a come from behind win against Cleveland Browns. With 202 left in regulation, Maddox ended a seven play, 84 yard drive with a 10 yard test on pass to good old Plexico Burris to tie the game. Still coach Bill Cowher officially named him the starter September 16th, 2002. Maddox started his first NFL game since 1992. Ten years later, he finally started another NFL game against the Saints. Which was a close loss, 32 to 29. He went 22 of 38 passing. Maddox threw for 268 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. His time in the XFL in the Arena League got him to trust his arm. And of course, by the time he came back to the NFL, it was a different game. It was a whole new ball game then. So he was kind of got comfortable using his arm, throwing, knew how to read defense stuff because he played in an offensive league in the Arena League and stuff. And even in the early 2000s, the NFL was slowly becoming offensive league, so that helped him some. I think being able to open up helped him some. The Steelers played a Monday Night Football game week 7. They were a 28-10 to 10 win. Um, I'm sorry. Let me go back. In week 6, Maddox won his third start with the Steelers. 34-7 over the Bengals. Maddox was 16-25 passing, 216 yards, one intercept, uh, one touchdown, two picks, and two sacks, but they overcame that. So again, Steelers played a Monday Night Football game week 7 with a 28-10 win over the Colts quarterback and quarterback Peyton Manning. Maddox um, out-dueled him 25 for 33 for 305 yards, three picks, and led the Steelers to touchdowns for the team's first three drives. Since the 0-2 start by Cordell Stewart, the Steelers had gone 4-1 under Tommy Maddox. 
In week 10, the Steelers tied the Atlanta Falcons 34-34, the first tied game since 97. Maddox passed for a career high, 473 yards, a career high at that point. 473 yards on two, 28, pass, uh, 28 completions on 41 passing attempts with four touchdowns and a pick. He was sacked once for three yards and rushed twice for seven. In the final drive of overtime, Maddox made a 50-yard pass to Burris. That was ultimately one yard short of a touchdown, so they could have won the game on that. Maddox left the Week 11 game in an ambulance after being tripped by a player for Tampa Bay, but a threat played the following week of victory of Cincinnati while Maddox recovered from his injuries. Coach Bill Cower chose to start the following game. Pittsburgh won that one as well over the Jaguars. Maddox returned to the start of Week 14, but the Steelers lost their expansion team, Houston Texas, 24-6. Maddox went down with six sacks, a lost fumble, and had, um, and had 30 for 57 yards for 325 yards in the game with a 55.1 passer rating. Um, Aaron Glenn from the Texans returned two Maddox interceptions for 70 and 65 yard touchdowns. Um, however, Maddox would lead the Steelers to the victory in his final three games in time two. With 13 starts, Maddox led the Steelers into the playoffs as an aerial circus ta- passing attack. It was a 10 5 and 1 record for the season. Maddox completed 234 um, passes uh, out of 337 for 2,836 yards, 20 touchdowns, 16 picks. So again, it was an even play. Um, he was sacked 26 times and committed 8 fumbles. So he, he was turnover pro. Ryan the Steelers from the 24 7 deficit. Maddox delivered a comeback 36 33 win over the Browns at home. He completed 30 of 48 passes for 367 yards, three touchdowns in the wild card round, but they lost 34 31 in overtime to the Titans in the divisional round. So, what could have been, you know? Maddox led the Steelers to a week one win in 2003, 34 15 over the Ravens. Um, Maddox completed 21 of 29 passes for 260 yards um, and three touchdowns. So, that's a good one. Hines, caught, Hines Ward caught two touchdowns. Although Maddox passed for 336, about 336 yards the following game, Maddox regressed statistically going 28 of 47 passing, one touchdown, three interceptions, and four sacks the following week. In week three, the Steelers beat uh, the Bengals uh, 17-10. He went 21 of 34 passing for 240 yards and one touchdown, one pick. Again, it was uneven. He's always throwing touchdowns, but he's also throwing picks. So it was, it was both. He was just, he was, they had to take you to the bat. So skipping to the end of the season, they went four and four at the end and finished with a six ten record. Maddox completed sixteen yard touchdown pass to Hines Ward with one minute left in week thirteen game against the Bengals to put him up twenty seventeen. But the Bengals scored a touchdown in the final minute to win. And that that's any chance of the Steelers making the playoffs. Although Maddox broke the team record the team record this season for the most single season completions, the Steelers ranked only twenty seconds in passing league wide. In two thousand four draft, the Steelers um Drafted Ben Roethlisberger, who's still with him, with 11 pick. The pick of Roethlisberger indicated that Maddox might have earned the lowest. Uh, indicated that the Maddox might have earned the lowest salary among starting quarterbacks. He only made seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Consequently, Maddox negotiated salary raises with Steeler Dan Rooney, owner Dan Rooney, before the draft. Maddox started the first two games to them four, a week one win over the Raiders, twenty four twenty one, and a week um, two loss to the Ravens, thirty to thirteen, all against Oakland. Uh, Maddox was just 13 to 32, uh, 13 to 22 for 142 yards. Maddox left the game against Baltimore at Elbow Spring, and Roethlisberger took over as quarterback. Roethlisberger named a new starting quarterback, and Maddox would be sidelined until November. Roethlisberger would lead them to a franchise record 13 game winning streak. We'll go down the rib injury week 13. Maddox played during the fourth quarter in the game. Maddox pitted one pass to Vernon Hayes for no gain, and still was relied mostly on running plays from Bettis and Hines Ward. The scheme allowed Pittsburgh to keep the ball for the last seven minutes, 47, 45 seconds of the game. Max would start the final game of the regular season, um, a 29-24 win over the Bills that eliminated the Bills from playoffs contention. Max completed uh, half his passes, 12-24 for 120 yards and a touchdown, but two picks. The Steelers become the first AFC team in history to finish regular season with a 15-1 and record in the playoffs. Tell me if you've heard this before. They would advance the AFC title game to lose to eventual Super Bowl 39 champion, the Patriots. So. Again, Patriots always win. 2005, Maddox returned to starter after Roethlisberger suffered a knee injury in Week 6. The Steelers lost Maddox for the first half of the first start of the season. 
In week six, the Steelers lost Maddox's first start of the season to the Jaguars 2017. He would only complete 11 and 28 passes, um, 454 yards, touchdown, three picks. In a press conference following the loss, Coach Bill Cower uh, stated that he would be substituting third string and Charlie Batch for Maddox. And Charlie and Maddox ended up being the backup for Roethlisberger for years and years and years. Uh, they went on to win the Super Bowl, so Tommy Maddox technically a Super Bowl champion, even though he's third string. He is the only guy to win an XFL championship. He's the first guy to win an XFL and uh, NFL championship. In free agency, he tried out for Oakland. He signed a, but didn't make it. Uh, but he ended up signing a contract for the Philadelphia Soul, um, but was waived in November 2006. On December 8th, Maddox worked out for the Cowboys, didn't get nothing. Um, 2007, Maddox scored a 75 on a local qualifier for the 2007 U.S. Open of Golf. Four over par, three under par, with the cutoff of qualification. Maddox was assistant coach at Grapevine High School baseball team that won the 5A Texas UIL state championship in 2016, running up 2017. He was also assistant coach for the Grapevine football team in 2017. He is now the head coach in Texas of the Decatur High School baseball team. That is why his Twitter handle is at Coach Maddox. <laughs> so Tommy Maddox, he had a really interesting career in a way because it was so uneven. Um, you know, he might have came out a little bit too early. Um, he might have got drafted a little bit too early. But he was always efficient for what he was. And in the XFL, he was an MVP. He's MVP in the XFL because uh, there's nothing against XFL Tommy. He was the best player in the league by far. If you look at who all was playing in the XFL then, there's two names people know from the XFL. Tommy Maddox, and he hate me. Now, I remember when he started starting for uh, Pittsburgh, I'm like, I know that guy. He was for the extreme. So, I mean, he was, he is the second, no offense, Tommy, the second most well known XFL player from the original XFL behind He Hate Me because He Hate Me had a cool fucking name. So, but I do believe that Tommy Maddox um, will live on forever as the first XFL MVP, as he should. And he has a place in all of our hearts just for that. Um, I think he's a lot better player than people give him credit for. I think he might have been in some wrong systems. But when he was able to let it loose and do his thing, he was a great quarterback. And uh, I'm sure right now in baseball, he's a great coach. So thank you for joining me on another episode of the um, XFL podcast. Again, the next episode is going to be about – it will be a shorter episode. It's going to be about the only championship game, um, the big game at the end, the million-dollar game. And when there's any breaking news, I will uh, do an episode. I'm excited. What do y'all think the XFL is going to go? Fox? ESPN, I mean, where? I mean, it's unlimited possibilities, and I know we're all excited for 2020. We got about a year ago, um, so some interesting news going to start happening. Can't wait to talk about the draft and all that good stuff. Follow me on Twitter at, at XFL Podcast and on Facebook at XFL Podcast. Also, you can find me on YouTube at, at XFL2K's YouTube and XFL2K.com. So check out the site as we've been working together. Thank you so much, and we will see you next time. And I appreciate everybody that's listening. And if you have any questions that you want answered on the show, DM me on Twitter or Facebook or just tweet at me um, and I'll answer it on the next episode. All right.